Hello students, let us discuss why do scientists feel the need to classify elements. Various historical development leading to modern periodic table and how the periodic classification follows a logical consequence of the electronic configuration of atoms. After the discussion, you will be able to appreciate how the concept of grouping elements in accordance to their properties led to the development of periodic table. Explain the periodic law, discuss the significance of atomic number and electronic configuration as the basis for periodic classification. Name the elements with atomic number greater than 100 according to IUPAC nomenclature. Take initiative to know about scientific discoveries or inventions. In our earlier classes, we have studied about the various elements and their properties. There are total 118 elements discovered till date. Out of these elements, some are metals, some are non-metals and some are metalloids. Students, just imagine if you need to study the properties of 118 elements altogether. Don't you think that it is a difficult task? According to you, what can be the solution for this problem? In our daily life, we classify many things. For example, animals are classified as wild, domestic, birds, reptiles, etc. And plants are classified as trees, herbs, shrubs, etc. We classify matter as solid, liquid and gases. Learning properties of one or two particular members gives us an idea about the rest of the members of the group. Students refer to the figure A. Things are cluttered and disorganized, which leads to a lot of confusion and chaos. On the other hand, if you refer to the figure B, things are organized and not cluttered. This leads to the need to classify and organize things according to similar behavior. We observe that sorting or grouping the things according to their properties prevents confusion and enhances understanding. Grouping of things according to similar properties is called classification. Classification of elements is defined as the system of arrangements of elements into different groups on the basis of their similarities, differences and the relationship. What is the history of classification of all the elements which were known before till date. Classification of elements into groups and development of periodic law and periodic table are the consequences of systematizing the knowledge gained by a number of scientists through their observations and experiments. Student, in our earlier classes, we have already studied some of the earlier classifications based on atomic masses of the elements. Let us discuss them briefly. The German chemist John Daubner in early 1800s was the first to consider the idea of trends among properties of elements. When three elements called triads with similar physical and chemical properties were arranged in increasing order of masses, the mean of the masses of first and the last element is equal to the mass of middlemost element. Since Daubner's relationship referred to as the law of triads seemed to work only for a few elements, it was dismissed as a coincidence. The next significant attempt to classify element was made by an English chemist, John Alexander Newlands in 1865 and called it as law of octaves, which states, when the elements are arranged in increasing order of their atomic weights, it was noted that every eighth element had properties similar to the first element. The relationship was just like every eighth note that resembles the first in octaves of music. Students, even this law also had limitations. Newland's law of octaves seemed to be true only for elements up to calcium. The periodic law, as we know it today, owes its development to the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev and the German chemist Lothar Mayer. Lothar Mayer proposed that on arranging elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights, similarities appear in the physical and chemical properties at regular intervals. He plotted the physical properties such as atomic volume, melting point and boiling point against atomic weight. 
we can see from the graph that there is periodic repetition of properties. The first really successful arrangement was done by Mendeley. He published the famous periodic law which states that the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights. Mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns of a table in order of their increasing atomic weights in such a way that the elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical column or group. Some of the elements did not fit in with his scheme of classification. If the order of atomic weight was strictly followed, he ignored the order of atomic masses and placed the elements with similar properties together. Keeping his primary aim of arranging the elements of similar properties in the same group, he proposed that some of the elements were still undiscovered and therefore left several gaps in the table. These elements were discovered later. Mostly showed that the atomic number is a more fundamental property of an element than its atomic mass. Mendeleev's periodic law was accordingly modified. This is known as the modern periodic law and can be stated as the physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. A modern version the so-called long form of the periodic table of the elements is the most convenient and widely used. The horizontal rows are called periods and the vertical columns groups. We know that the nucleus is deep seated inside an atom, but the electrons outside it, especially the ones in the outermost shell are free to move around. Hence, they take part in chemical reactions. For this reason, the properties of an element depend on the atomic number rather than the atomic mass. Let us now understand the cause of periodicity in properties, which is the repetition of similar outer electronic configuration after certain regular interval. Please note that the following important features of modern periodic table, these groups are numbered from 1 to 18. Each group consists of elements having the same outer shell electronic configuration. The following names for specific groups in the periodic table are in common use. Group 1, alkali metals. Group 2 are called alkaline earth metals. Group 3 to 12 are called as transition elements. Group 13 are known as carbon family. Group 14, boron family. Group 15, nitrogen family. Group 16 are also called as chalcogens or forming elements. Group 17 halogens, salt producing elements. Group 18 are noble gases. These are the horizontal rows in the modern or long form of the periodic table. There are seven periods in the periodic table. These are numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 from top to bottom. First period consists of only two elements hydrogen and helium. Second and third period consist of eight elements each. Fourth and fifth period consist of 18 elements each. Sixth and seventh period consist of 32 elements. As you may see in the long form of the periodic table that 14 elements of both sixth and seventh periods are called lanthanoids and actinoids respectively. They are placed in separate panels at the bottom. Traditionally, the newly discovered elements are named either after their synthesizers or discoverers. For example, the element Mendelevium with atomic number 101 was named after Dmitry Mendeleev. However, for the elements having atomic number greater than 103, different group began to claim credit for discovery of same element, causing naming controversy. For example, both American and Soviet scientists claim credit for discovering element with atomic number 104. The Americans named it Rutherfordium, whereas Soviets named it Kurchatovium. To avoid such problems, the IUPAC has made recommendation that until a new element's discovery is proved and its name is officially recognized, a systematic nomenclature be derived directly from the atomic number of the element 
using the numerical roots for 0 and numbers 1 to 9. The roots are put together in order of digits which make up the atomic number with am appended to it at the end of the name derived. For example, an element with atomic number 118 should be named as an un octium from 1 equal to un and 8 is equal to oct and em. The first alphabet forms the temporary symbol of the element, capital U, small u, o. After the discovery of new element, its proof permanent name and symbol are given by a vote of IUPAC representatives from each country. The permanent name might reflect the country or state of the country in which the element was discovered or pay tribute to a notable scientist. Let us try to recapitulate what we have learned so far. Classification of elements not only helps scientists to comprehend the properties and chemistry of existing elements, but also speculate the properties of elements yet to be discovered. Scientists use different approaches to classify the elements. Some of them were Daubner triads, Newland's law of octaves and Mendeleev's periodic law etc. Modern periodic table or long form periodic table of the elements is the most convenient and widely used. It has 18 groups and 7 periods. Modern periodic law states that the physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers. Modern periodic law states the physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers. Here is a task for you. Question 1. What is the basic difference in approach between Mendeleev's periodic law and the modern periodic law? Question 2. Justify the given statement with suitable examples. The properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers. Question 3. In what manner is the long form of periodic table better than Mendeleev's periodic table? Explain with examples. We already know that long form of the periodic table is the most widely used modern periodic table. It arranges all the known elements into 7 periods and 18 groups. Now we are going to discuss how are these elements placed in the periodic table based on their electronic configuration. After this discussion, you will be able to explain the significance of atomic number and electronic configuration as the basis of periodic classification. Classify elements into S, P, D and F blocks and also learn their main characteristics. Classify elements as metals, non-metals and metalloids based on their characteristic properties. Why use electronic configuration to decide the arrangement of elements? To find the answer to this question, let us first review what electronic configuration means. The term electronic configuration refers to the distribution of electrons in the shells and orbitals of an atom. The principal quantum number, that is n, defines the main energy level known as shell of an electron and gives its distance from the nucleus. Shell is further divided into subshells. Usually, these are S, P, D and F subshells. The electronic configuration of an atom defines its physical and chemical properties. Let us study and understand how there is a direct connection between the electronic configuration of the elements and the long form of the periodic table. A long form of periodic table arranges elements with same quantum number in the same period in such a way that only their electronic configuration of outermost shell changes. The number of elements in the period therefore depends on maximum number of electrons that a shell can accommodate. For example, the first period corresponds to the filling of the electrons in first shell where n equals 1 and has only one s orbital. The s orbital can accommodate maximum two electrons. Therefore, it has only two elements, hydrogen 1s1 and helium 1s2. The second period corresponds to second energy shell that is n equals 2. It has total four orbitals, one orbital of 2s and three orbitals of 2p that can accommodate maximum of eight electrons that is there are eight elements in the second period. It starts with lithium 
with atomic number 3 and electronic configuration 1s2, 2s1 and ends at neon with atomic number 10 and electronic configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The third period corresponds to third energy shell that is n equals 3 and has 3s, 3p and 3d subshells. According to Aufbau principle, the electrons are added to different orbitals in order of their increasing energies. Since the energy of 3d subshell is higher than that of 4s subshell, therefore in third period, electrons can be filled in only 3s and 3p subshells. One orbital of 3s and three orbitals of 3p that can accommodate maximum of eight electrons. That is, there are eight elements in the third period and not 18. The third period begins at sodium with the atomic number 11. The added electron enters the 3s orbital. Successive filling of 3s and 3p orbitals give rise to the third period of eight elements from sodium atomic number 11 to argon atomic number 18. We will similarly look at the elements in the fourth period. It starts at potassium atomic number 19 and having electronic configuration 4s1. You may note that before the 4p orbital is filled, filling of 3d orbital becomes energetically favorable according to the Aufbau principle and we come across the 3d transition series of elements. The transition series starts from scandium with atomic number 21 and electronic configuration 3d1, 4s2. It ends at zinc with atomic number 30 and electronic configuration 3d10, 4s2. The fourth period ends at krypton with atomic number 36 with the filling up of 4p orbitals. Therefore, in the fourth period, the filling of only 9 orbitals 1 4s, 5 3d and 3 4p occurs. This is why altogether we have 18 elements in this fourth period. The fifth period like the fourth period contains 18 elements. Since only 9 orbitals 1 5s, 5 4d and 3 5p are available for filling with electrons. It begins with rubidium with atomic number 37 in which one electron enters the 5s orbital. After the filling of 5s orbital, the filling of 4d orbital starts at yttrium with atomic number 39 and ends at cadmium with atomic number 48. These 10 elements constitute 4d transition series. Thereafter, filling of 5p orbital starts at indium with atomic number 49 and ends at xenon with atomic number 54. I think you are all now familiar with the filling up of electrons in various periods. For more clarity, let us look at the elements in the 6th and 7th period. For 6th period, only 16 orbitals are available, 1 6s, 7 4f, 5 5d and 3 6p for filling with electrons. So this period contains 32 elements. The last period, that is 7th period, like in the 6th period, contains 32 elements corresponding to the filling of 16 orbitals, that is 1,7s, 7,5f, 5,6d and 3,7p orbitals. Now that we have discussed electronic configuration related to various period, as you know, there are 18 groups, vertical columns, in the periodic table. The elements in the same group have similar valence shell electronic configuration. For example, elements of group 1 called alkali metals all have NS1 valence shell electronic configuration. Similarly, elements of group 17 called halogens all have NS2 NP5 valence shell configuration. Thus, it can be seen that properties of the elements have periodic dependence upon its atomic number. You can make learning fun by exploring more about the periodic table through the interactive periodic table game. The game will allow you to explore patterns and trends to understand the reason for the pattern in the periodic table. 
Link for interactive periodic table activity is shown on the screen. Play and have fun. The elements of a periodic table are categorized as S block, P block, D block and F block elements based on the name of the orbital which receives the last electron. The exceptions are hydrogen and helium. How do I find a group period and a block of an element? Let us understand taking an example of an element having atomic number 20. Write the electronic configuration that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Since the last electron enters in the s block, hence the element belongs to the s block highest value of the principal quantum number denotes the period number. In this case, it is 4, hence this belongs to period 4. For finding group number, it is different for different blocks. For S block, it is equal to the number of electrons in the outermost shell. For P block, it is equal to the number of electrons in the outermost shell plus 10. For D block, it is equal to the number of electrons in the outermost shell plus number of electrons in the second last shell. In this example, since element belongs to S block, hence the group number is equal to number of electrons in 4S, that is group 2. In this way, you can locate position of any given element in the periodic table. We will now briefly discuss the general characteristic of the elements present in these blocks of the periodic table. First, let us talk about the S block elements. Those elements in which the last electron enters into the S subshell are called S block elements. The elements of group 1 that is alkali metals and group 2 that is alkaline earth metals which have NS1 and NS2 outermost electronic configuration belong to this block. They are all reactive metals with low ionization enthalpies. They lose the outermost electron to form plus 1 ion in the case of alkali metals or plus 2 ion in the case of alkaline earth metals. Because of high reactivity, they are never found pure in nature. Let's talk about P block elements. Those elements in which the last electron enters into the P subshell are called P block elements. The elements of group 13 to 18 belongs to this block. The outermost electronic configuration varies from NS2, NP1 to NS2, NP6 in each period. For example, elements belonging to group 13 will have outermost electronic configuration as NS2, NP1. Group 18 are noble gas elements with a closed valence shell configuration NS2, NP6. Preceding the noble gas family are two chemically important groups of non-metals. They are halogens that is group 17 and the chalcogens that is group 16. These together with the S block elements are called the representative elements or main group elements. Students, let's study about the D block elements. These are the elements of group 3 to 12 in the center of the periodic table and are also called as transition elements as they form bridge between the chemically active metals of S block elements and the less active elements of group 13 and 14. These elements have the general outer electronic configuration N minus 1, D 1 to 10, NS 0 to 2. These are characterized by the filling of inner D orbitals by electrons and are therefore referred to as D block elements. They are all metals. They mostly form colored ions, exhibit variable oxidation states, paramagnetism and often are used as catalysts. Let us talk about the F block elements. Elements in the last two rows at the bottom of the periodic table are called F block elements or inner transition elements. They are characterized by the outer electronic configuration N minus 2 F 1 to 14 N minus 1 D 0 to 1 NS 2. The last electron added to each element is filled in F orbital. The F block elements of the series in which the electrons are in 4F orbitals are called lanthanoids. The elements of the series 
in which the electrons are in 5f orbitals are called actinoids. They are all metals and within each series, the properties of the elements are quite similar. Actinoid elements are radioactive. Apart from classifying the elements into S, P, D and F blocks, the periodic table also shows the classification of elements into metals, non-metals and metalloids based on their properties. A characteristic property is a distinctive trait which helps us to identify a substance and distinguish it from other elements. We have already studied the properties of metals and non-metals in earlier classes. Metals comprise more than 78% of all known elements and appear on the left side of the periodic table. Do you remember how do metals look or what are their properties? Yes, metals are usually solids at room temperature except mercury which is liquid, have high melting and boiling points, they are good conductors of heat and electricity, they are malleable that is can be flattened into thin sheets by hammering and ductile that is can be drawn into wires. What about non-metals? Do you remember anything studied in earlier class? Non-metals are located at the top right hand side of the periodic table, they are usually solids or gases at room temperature with low melting and boiling points except boron and carbon. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Most non-metallic solids are brittle and are neither malleable nor ductile. The elements which show properties that are characteristic of both metals and non-metals are called semi-metals or metalloids. Thus from the discussion till now, we conclude that the elements in the long form of periodic table are organized based on the principal quantum numbers of the last filled orbital. The periods in the periodic table indicate the value of principal quantum number n for the valence shell. Elements in the same vertical column or group have similar valence shell electronic configurations that is the same number of valence electrons and therefore similar properties. The elements of a periodic table are categorized as S block, P block, D block and F block elements. The periodic table also shows the classification of elements into metals, non-metals and metalloids. Let us test ourselves by solving few questions. Question 1. Write down the outermost electronic configuration of alkali metals. How will you justify their placement in group 1 of the periodic table? Question 2. Identify the group and valency of the element having atomic number 16. Also predict the electronic configuration and write the general formula of its oxide. Question 3. Why do elements in a group show similar chemical properties? So students, keep practicing and keep learning. Thank you.